Hey, I'm Metasoma, and welcome to Aspect History. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the supernatural demon spirits common to Islamic theology, the genie. Genies, or jinn, have roots in many cultures throughout history. They appear in stories from Sierra Leone and Africa as spirits that possess people. They show up in Roman stories as the masculine spiritual equivalents of Juno. In this rundown, we're going to be looking at the more common classical version of the creature as documented in the Islamic faith, the jinn. A quick narrator's note on my research into pronunciations for this episode. There are several variations of the spelling of genie depending on which culture you're drawing from. While many people seem to pronounce the variations a little differently, the most authoritative sources I could find broke it down into two main sounds, jinn and genie. If you have sources for other pronunciations, please let us know in the comments so we can make sure we have all the facts. The Quran states that after the creation of the world and before Adam came to be, Allah created the jinn, a species formed from smokeless fire. The jinn are seen as beings of formlessness, able to live inside all inanimate things and hidden from the senses of ordinary humans. On occasion, they can make themselves whole and visible in any form they wish, but are mostly separated from us. Jinn exist outside of our physical realm, but share a number of similar traits to humans. Firstly, they require food and water to survive. They need to procreate to continue on existing, and eventually, after a long, long time, they die. Even after death, their spirits are subjected to salvation or punishment in the Islamic faith, depending on the kind of life they led. They live in complex societies like our own, with males and females, young and old, believers and non-believers, and are subjected to the same religious dogma. Jinn are, however, strong. They're also very fast, and due to their formlessness, they are free from all regular physical limitations. It's a commonly held belief that jinn are analogous to demons. Jinn have the free will to choose not to obey their god, and with this comes the desire and freedom to make choices, just like with people. The demon analogy comes into play specifically here, as those choices are normally seen as evil, untrustworthy, and oppressive. It is important to point out, however, that in practice jinn can actually be good or evil. It's entirely situational. Jinn are common in Arabian tales. Perhaps most famously, they show up in 1001 Nights. This compendium of stories includes multiple representations from the jinn. Here are some examples of them from that book. The Genie of the Lamp and the Genie of the Ring from Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp. The Genie imprisoned in a jar in The Fisherman and the Genie. The Jinn Princess in the Tale of Kamar al-Zaman. There are a few very distinct classes of jinn. We'll cover just three of these now. Marid, the genie that Westerners are commonly aware of. These beings are the barrel-chested, powerful creatures that can be compelled to perform deeds for a master. In some stories, they are also capable of granting wishes when imprisoned. Ifrit, tribal jinn that are mostly infernal and likely to lean towards more evil deeds. They are cunning beings that dwell beneath the earth and are hard to control. It is said that King Solomon was given authority over these jinn by Allah. Solomon used the power to command them to build the first temple. Thirdly, we have the ghoul. These jinn are said to be predatory beings that hide in human forms and prey on the flesh of victims. 
Ghouls are explicitly demonic in nature and are incapable of benevolence. Some prophets in Islam are shared between jinn and humans. Muhammad, for instance, was sent as a prophet to both communities, and there are passages in the Quran which deal with him interacting with jinn directly. Here is one example of Muhammad's dealings with the jinn. In Muhammad's words, Every one of you has been assigned a companion from the jinn. The companions asked, Even you, O messenger of God. And the prophet replied, Even me, except that God has helped me against him, and he has become a Muslim. Now he only tells me to do good. In that passage, you can see the free nature of the jinn and how they had the choice to follow Islam or not. Also in the Quran are angels. They exist here as genderless followers of Allah, without the free will to disobey him. Angels are forged of light, where jinn are forged of fire. In the Islamic faith, the Satan role is taken up by a being named Iblis. An interesting note is that, while there's no complete agreement on the root of the name Iblis, Many historians theorize that it was drawn from the Greek name for Satan, Diablos. One tale states that Iblis was an angel forged from fire instead of light. Another tale states that Iblis is a jinn that was elevated to paradise for his great piety of Allah. In both versions of the story, Iblis was cast out from paradise for refusing to bow before Adam. As a regular angel cannot possibly refuse the orders of Allah, the common assertion is that Iblis, the devil of the Islamic faith, is a jinn. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe to show us your support. You can keep up to date with the channel on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord, where you can find news, updates, or even just chat around with us. If you're new to the series, or new to the channel, why not check out some of the other videos linked right here. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles!